Let me say it again. It's a dual assignment. Beloved, I pray of all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So the enemy comes against that scriptural statement. And he has a king of Assyria over another king, ben Hadad, who's over your prosperity. And he's over another king of Babylon who's over your health. He's the anti-assignment on that scripture. Now, the king of Assyria is attached to your soul wounds. Does the scripture actually say that? Yes, it does. Listen to Isaiah 10. You're not going to only hear proof that he is attached to wounds in your soul, but you're going to hear proof that the antidote for those wounds is the light of Israel, Jesus Christ. Listen to the scripture. This is God making a statement of judgment against the Assyrian king who's over Ben-Hadad and Babylon. Listen. Here's the judgment. And the light of Israel, that's Jesus, shall become a fire and his holy one a flame and it shall burn and devour the Assyrian thorns and briars in one day. And the Lord will consume the glory of the Assyrian forest and his fruitful field in both soul and body. Did that just knock your socks off? That is verse 17 in the Amplified Version. By the way, as we go through the evening and you hear me sing scriptures, most of the scriptures I quote come from the Amplified, just to clarify for you. Amen? Isaiah 10, Isaiah 10 verse 17 in the Amplified. He is connected to the wounds in your soul, but the light of Israel shall become a fire and burn away his briars and thorns in both your soul and your body. You're going to get a healing in your soul connected to your finances and a healing in your soul connected to your body. Hallelujah. Last week, last week we were in, um, gosh, where were we? <laughs> Arkansas, that's right. And it was a capacity crowd. And it was an amazing meeting, and I was teaching on this. And during this soak, the activation, which we're going to step into, I felt this burning around my neck. And I knew that the Assyrian king was coming off. How did I know that? Because one of the ways to get rid of this king is through the anointing that you're carrying, the king killer anointing that Jesus gave us. Hallelujah. The king killer anointing that Jesus gave us breaks the yoke of the Assyrian king off of your neck. How many of you heard that famous passage, that famous phrase, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing, that famous scripture? How many of you quoted that famous scripture before? And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Do you really know where, where that scripture is and what it's talking about? Guess what it's talking about. It's referring specifically to the yoke of the Assyrian king. Listen, it's in Isaiah 10. Starts, I'll start again in verse 8. It says, For the Assyrian says, Are not all my officers either subjugated kings or their equal? Now shall I not be able to do to Jerusalem and her images as I've done to Samaria? Says the Assyrian, I've removed the boundaries of the people and have robbed their treasures. Then verse 24, Therefore this is what the Lord says, the Lord God Almighty, O my people who live in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrians who beat you with rod and lift up a club against you as Egypt did. Verse 27, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken off thy shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck because the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Never knew that, did you? It's actually talking about the Syrian king. And when we were in the activation in Arkansas, I felt burning around my neck and I began to decree. I said, the Assyrian king is being broken off of people's necks right now. And we had dozens of people come up afterwards and say, when you said that, my neck started burning and my pain disappeared from my body and I'm expecting a financial miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. Scripture is so amazing, isn't it? Now, let me tell you about the third king. So here's these two kings and they're in collusion together. 
to cause you to be put under the spirit of famine so that you will eat your seed and not bring it into the storehouse, right? What happens when you eat your seed and you don't bring it into the storehouse? Let me share that with you. Let's read from Malachi 3. It says this, For I am the Lord, I do not change. That is why you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Will a man rob or defraud God? Yet you rob and defraud me. But you say, in what way do we rob and defraud you? You have withheld your tithes and offerings, so you are cursed with a curse. Who'd you learn about last session? Who's the king over curses? Balak. And he is in collusion with every other demonic king. So when Ben-Hadad and the Assyrian king succeed in putting so much fear in you with the famine that you will eat your seed and then you do not bring your seed into the storehouse and you rob God, then Balak comes into action and puts a curse on your money because now you're cursed with a curse. You know what the bummer thing about that is? Curses are generational. You could have been bringing your tithe in this whole time but if your ancestors weren't, a curse landed on them and it was passed down in your soul. Did you hear me? Talk about passing the buck. <laughs> that ain't right. I would have gone on and collected on people like that when I was on the street. You owe the money, not me. Pass it up. <laughs> Don't even think I didn't do stuff like that. It was worse. I had a gun in my hand when I did it. These three kings are just like what I taught you this afternoon. They're in collusion together to defraud you and to rob you and, and to take your rights. Amen? Hallelujah? Hallelujah. Many years ago, when we first got out of prison, the Lord instructed my husband to start a, a company. And um, we were just working our little minimum wage jobs. And... Um, about six months or so into it, I'm not quite sure of the time frame at this moment, but uh, the Lord spoke to my husband one day and told him to start his own company. He was standing in the shower when it happened. I'll never forget. He came out in the living room. He still had water all over him. He said, I think the Lord just talked to me in the shower. I said, what did he say? He said, he told me to start a company. And then he said this, um, I'm going to increase your business so that she can be about my business. And it happened. It happened within three days. My husband started this wonderful company and he was making three times more in one day than he had in an entire week. Okay, now, by the following year, my husband's company was making close to half a million dollars a year. Now, you have to know something. My husband has a ninth grade education and he served over 17 years in prison. That's a supernatural act of God. Right? Okay, so everything's cooking right along and the, and the ministry gets started and I'm able to quit my job and do, start the work that I'm doing now and working in the prisons and it was amazing. And then the famine hit the entire land of America. And businesses, including my husband's, closed down overnight, leaving tens of thousands of dollars of debt. And guess what? King Ben-Hadad and the Syrian king started working their assignment on us. They caused my husband and I to be afraid. And here we are, my husband didn't have a job, I'm working for free for the ministry, and we got afraid, and we stopped bringing our seed into the storehouse, and we began to eat it. And things were getting worse and worse. Nine months is going by. My husband has no unemployment. He has nothing. We have no income coming. The ministry was going into debt. I'm, I'm working full time, but I'm not getting paid. And we're like, oh my gosh, what do we do? And God begins to show me this revelation. He begins to show me this revelation. And I began to position myself to make war to cause a breaking off of these kings that had come upon us. Now, I didn't tell my husband what I was doing. I just was doing it. But I remember God is so good. 
Because he has to tell the head and my husband's the head. God is so good. I'm doing the war. I'm doing the war and I'm doing all this praying and believing and everything else. And that night my husband goes to bed. Now remember, we had not been bringing our gift and our tithe into the storehouse because we were afraid. We were eating our seed. And my husband wakes up in the middle of the night filled with what he called later a dread, a deep fear of the Lord, a deep, deep fear of the Lord. And he got up and that night in the middle of the night, he wrote out an offering check. Yes, he was atoning. You see, he was atoning for what we had not done. And I had not told him what I was doing. And so he takes this offering check. He comes and explains to me the next day about this horrible, dreadful fear that swept over him that he must be immediately obedient to God. And he writes the check. I'm doing the war. We plant the seed within five days. Now remember, my husband had been unemployed for nine months. Within five days, my husband gets a phone call from a company he had not spoken to for over a year. And they gave him a job that took them two weeks to do. It was worth $80,000. I don't know if it was six months later, honey, do you remember? Or nine months or something after that. The same company called back, gave my husband another job. I think it took him a month or two to do, and it was worth a quarter of a million dollars. And this, right in the midst of the famine when no one else was working, every other company shut down. The million dollar company that was subbing him the work completely shut their doors, shut down their building and everything, and we are being prospered in the middle of the famine. Hallelujah. Amen. So what do we do to break these kings off our finances? How do we begin? Number one, you've got to repent. You've got to repent because somewhere along the line, you were a bad steward with what God gave you. Somewhere along the line, you, you possibly fell for the strategy of the Assyrian king and King Ben-Hadad, and you ate your seed and you sinned by not bringing the full tithe into the storehouse, and then you got cursed with a curse. You know, the very first time we ever see King Ben-Hadad listed in Scripture, it's in 1 Kings 15. And this story, listen to me, it happens before the famine famine in Samaria. Just listen to what it says. It says there was a war between two Israelite kings, Asa and Basha. And Asa went and he took all the silver and gold left in the treasury of the house of the Lord and he delivered them to King Ben-Hadad. And he said, look, make a league between you and me and break your league between you and the other Israelite king so I can win this war. And King Ben-Hadad hearkened to King Asa, took the money, and he began to back up Asa and break his league with the other Israelite king. Now you see, the reason why King Ben-Hadad was able to put the Israelites under Samaria generations later, under the famine in Samaria generations later, is because generations before, somebody opened the door to him with sin. Guess what the particular sin was? Listen to it again. Asa's particular sin was this. He took all the silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Ben had had made him eat his seed, man. He robbed God. He did exactly what the strategy of the enemy is. He took the seed meant for the house of God and he put it in the hands of the demonic. He put it in the hands of an evil king. He robbed God. He robbed the house of God. And he got cursed with a curse because he robbed God. That's what Malachi 3 says. And that curse traveled down to the generations and later on enabled Ben-Hadad to once again come and then put Samaria under famine. We've got to repent. We've got to repent and we're going to do that tonight. What's the next thing you can do to break off these evil kings? You need to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Some of you tonight are going to have the Holy Spirit come to you and instruct you to give an atoning seed, an atoning gift. And that atoning gift is going to clear the board from this moment all the way back in time to Adam. It's going to wipe out even the things that your ancestors did to rob God and get themselves put under a curse. 
Is that a toning tithe? Is, is that biblical? Well, it says in the Old Testament, in Exodus 22, that he who robs shall pay back double. But you might say, that's Old Testament. What about the New Testament? Well, we see an example of the atoning tithe in the story of the tax collector Zacchaeus. Remember that scripture? It said that when Jesus came to Zacchaeus' house, Zacchaeus was so convicted of his sin of robbery, he said this, he said, look, Lord, I will give half of my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything from anyone else by false accusation, I will restore fourfold. So here is Zacchaeus, he's giving back an atoning tithe for every time he robbed somebody. And you know what? Jesus was standing there giving his thumbs up, his approval to Zacchaeus doing this because the scripture said that Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house. You know why Jesus did that? Because Zacchaeus' act of having an atoning tithe, of returning that which he had robbed, showed that he was truly repentant for what he had done. Amen? As we go into warfare against these kings, you're going to get quiet, and you're going to let Holy Spirit tell you. I'm not going to tell you. Holy Spirit is going to tell you. Are you one of the people that need to give an atoning tithe? And when you do it, you should give exactly what Holy Spirit tells you to give, the exact number, because he knows exactly what it's going to take for restoration to come. Amen? And no matter what he says, if it's five cents, then believe that he can atone for every sin and every curse with the five cents. But if it's $5,000, you have to be equally as faithful. It's easy to believe for the five cents. And God can do it. But whatever he tells you, you need not to be afraid. And you need to believe that as you bring the atoning tithe into the storehouse, that it's going to break off every curse and every demonic king that's on your finances. And even tonight in the activation, your soul is going to start getting healed of every wound that Assyria is stuck to. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like it happened last week with all those people having the yoke of the Assyrian broken off their neck. Amen. As you prepare your gift tonight, you're gonna to focus, we're gonna focus our king killer anointing on the gift to break off the Assyrian yoke. And you're also going to focus on who? Jesus. Jesus. Because you see, what Balak is in on this, he's in collusion with the other two kings. And he is the curse maker, but Jesus is the curse breaker. Hallelujah. And as you focus on Jesus releasing the presence of the curse breaker, the king of kings, against these other evil kings that are on your money, and as you bring your gift up and we're repenting for a sin, then you're going you're gonna to get a miracle. You're going to get a financial breakthrough. Look, if God did it for us, he's going to do it for you too, amen? And the one last thing, and I just got to add this in. Do you know that there are big rewards for being king killers? Let me prove it to you. Remember in the story of 1 Samuel 17 with David and Goliath? And David's going up to the line and he's watching all this business going on with everybody talking about Goliath. And he turns to one of the soldiers in the Israelite army and he says, uh, What should be done? What shall be done for the man who kills this uncircumcised Philistine? And one of the men answered him and says, Surely the man who kills him, the king, will enrich with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's household free from taxes and service in Israel. Thus shall be done for the man who kills him. Who does Goliath represent? Every demonic king. When you become a king killer, you are going to be enriched with great riches. You're going to be given the daughter of the king. You know what the daughter of the king is? It's the bride, baby. You're learning how to free the bride from demonic kings who are over their minds, their bodies, their souls, their finances, their ministries, and everything else. And God doesn't take that lightly. He will enrich you with great riches because you're killing the kings that are holding his daughter, his bride, captive. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's a good word. Is that a good word? We're going to pray a prayer of repentance that's attached to your finances. And then I want you to get quiet 
And I want you to ask the Lord, what should your atoning gift be tonight to make a breakthrough for you? And then as you bring it up, we're going to pray. I, I think we're going to bring the buckets down the line, but then when they bring them up, we're going to all stand here and we're going to pray and, and intercede and decree over them to get these kings broken off of your finances. Let's start with the prayer of repentance. Just pray with me. I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I believe that he died on the cross for me, becoming a curse for me. For it is written, cursed is anyone who is hung on a tree. It is through the power of Jesus' death and resurrection that I am freed from the curse and able to receive the blessings of Abraham. I announce any activities of Satan and his kings and all the powers and master spirits underneath them that have put me in famine, made me eat my seed and curse my finances. I command every one of them to obey the belief of my heart and the confession of my mouth. I renounce any activities that myself or my ancestors took part in that opened up my finances to a curse. I decree this for every single person in my family line all the way back to Adam. I renounce gambling, theft, robbery, fraud, swindling, counterfeit, embezzlement, piracy, laziness, bad stewardship, and I repent for eating my seed and not bringing in the full tithe to the storehouse. I ask forgiveness for all these sins, for everyone in my family line, all the way back to Adam. I decree that my soul is going to get healed in the blood of Jesus and the glory light of Jesus. I decree that every place in my soul that the Assyrian king is stuck to is going to be healed by the light of Israel. The light of Israel is going to burn away the briars and thorns of the Assyrian king in both soul and body. I decree the victory in my finances beginning now in the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah, give us a shout of praise. Now I want you to be still and I want you to prepare your offering tonight. Ask the Lord, you ask him and listen for his voice. And then whatever he tells you to do, you do. And don't be afraid. Expect a miracle. Like my husband and I have said so many financial miracles. And I know God wants his people to be empowered with wealth so that they can empower the kingdom of heaven and cause it to continue to spread and increase across this world. So just be still now and listen for his voice.
If you need an envelope, raise your hand. It, it, does everyone have an envelope? Do they have anything, right? Everyone's good? There's a couple more hands there. You can write your checks out to Expected in Ministries. You can give a credit card offering. There's another gentleman right here. Right here. Another gentleman right there. There's some people in the back right there that need another envelope. Just do what the Lord is telling you to do and believe. We've had so many financial miracles. I think somebody just came up and testified that they had a $30,000 miracle from listening to the teaching on the CD set. We've had so many people have breakthroughs in the financial realm because of the truth of the scriptures. Because what the word of God says, Jesus. I hear the Syrian king is really trying to freak you out right now. He's trying to make you scared. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Overcome the doubt. Overcome the fear. He's trying to get you not to sow your seed. He's trying to get you to do exactly what he's always done, to eat your seed, not to put it into the storehouse. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Jesus, out doubt, out doubt, out doubt, out doubt, out doubt, out doubt, out doubt. We had to overcome our fear too. We had to overcome our fear too. My husband had to come overcome his fear. He had to work for nine months. He had no money coming in, but he overcame his fear. He got up in the middle of the night and he let the Spirit of God drive him to bring the atoning gift in. And we got the miracle. We got a breakthrough because of it. Shabbat. Shabbat. Don't let the enemy bully you right now and push you around. Jesus. Jesus. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Is anybody not ready? Raise your hand if you're not ready yet. Okay, let's give them a few more minutes. Let's give people just a few more minutes. We're just decreeing the victory. We're just decreeing the victory. We're decreeing the victory. The truth of the Word of God, it's all true. It guides us, it leads us. It's a lamp unto our path, a light unto our feet. It shows us the way to the breakthrough. It shows us the way to the victory. It shows us the way we must take, the road we must take to cause ourselves to be catapulted to another level. And once we see the breakthrough, then, then we can continue to move in that realm of faith. Because a new level of faith will be imparted to us. Because we'll actually encounter, we'll have an experience with the kingdom of heaven manifesting in our lives firsthand, a miracle. Every rest of you, if you're done, just start going. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Loose him, loose his presence, loose his presence, loose his presence, loose his presence. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's making war, He's making war. He's making war for you. He's making war. He's making war for you, Jesus. He's making war. He's making war for your breakthrough right now. He's the King of Kings. He's the King of Kings. Lord of Lords, King of Kings, 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 King of Kings, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, sing it with me right now, King of Kings. King of Kings, 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 Jesus, 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 honey, baby, come here. This is my hubby. Thank you. Okay, let's start, amen? And just as you put it in the basket, begin to loose your king killer anointing on it. Speak to it. And begin to loose your king killer anointing on it. Amen. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. Okay, hallelujah. There we go. Just loose the king killer anointing right now in the presence of Jesus. Focus. Focus on his presence. Focus on releasing the anointing that Jesus gave to you. Hallelujah. To cause you to get the breakthrough right now. Jesus. 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 Oh. Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 make war, make war, Jesus, make war, make war, Jesus, Jesus.
I just heard that the spirit of Solomon is in the room right now. Ooh. I've never had that happen before. The spirit of Solomon is in the room. He was the richest king in the whole Bible. And he had the wisdom to steward that money. I release the spirit of Solomon in this place tonight. The wealth of Solomon in this place tonight. And I release the wisdom that Solomon had to steward that money. I decree it, filling your soul right now. That the wisdom of Solomon is filling your soul right now. And causing you to be filled with the wisdom, the wisdom of Solomon to be able to steward the money. So receive it, fall up in the atmosphere. Grab it. Grab it. I've never heard that before. It's happening tonight. The Lord says, I'm going to fill up your tank with gas. You're always going to have it. 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 Wow. Jesus. You see that Jesus just did the battle for you. He just broke off the curses for you. Hallelujah. He's so good. He's so good. Hallelujah. Jesus. <sighs> Expect a breakthrough tonight. Okay, are we ready to soak our souls? Are you ready? Okay. Everybody, you can sit down or you can lay around or you can stand up. Make yourself in a place where you can be positioned to get in the glory, to get the glory and the light on your soul. Hallelujah. There's room up here. There's even room on the stage. Everybody get comfortable. If you want to come up and lay on the stage, you can too. Just we we'll have to make sure that when we're done that everybody can come back down. And if you're in a chair and you want to lay down on the chairs, then have everybody else scoot over for the moment. Just get wherever you lay in the whole aisle way, but just make sure if anybody needs to pass you by, they can. Okay, come on up here. It's okay. Up here is fine. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Okay, let's get settled, everybody. There's still some more room up here. There's some room in the hall, in the aisle. You can sit in a chair. If you're a pacer and you need to walk, go in the back, but try to be as quiet as you can so you don't disturb anyone else. Amen? There's more room right here. Okay. Okay, now, let's just review really quick, okay? We're gonna do the three steps, amen? Step number one, you're gonna start repenting for any sin that created a wound in your soul. Now, 
Don't try to think about what the wound is, please. Don't say, I know it's this, I know it's that. It's this wound, it's that wound. You know, you don't know. The wound you think you wanna deal with might be connected to something totally different that you have to deal with first. Something you might not even remember or recall at all. So just start generally putting your faith on, re on repenting, amen? And then if God happens to bring something to your mind that you weren't even thinking about, then he's showing you what your target is. And then you need to put the blood, okay? So we're gonna start with there, and then we're gonna press into it, and we'll tell you when to take a little break, and then I'll review step two, and we'll go into that too, all right? Is everybody ready? If you're not comfortable sitting up, there's still room up here, and there's room in the hallways. Okay, good. Okay, is everybody getting settled? Try to get settled. Try to get settled as fast as you can. Okay, are we ready? All right, here we go. Everybody take a deep breath. Now let it out. Good. Now, keep your focus. Focus on the blood. Focus on repenting. Focus on forgiving. Here we go. Focus on the blood. I'm feeling burning glory on my face. Keep on focusing on the blood.
angels are here. It's working. Keep focusing. We're seeing a lot of stuff. Focus on the blood. Somebody's had chronic nosebleeds and they're going to stop just a little bit longer with the blood. Okay, everybody take a deep breath. Let it out. Oh, that was good. 
We felt the power in that. Amen. It's working. You know, it's so funny because you think, this is stupid. We're sitting here, we're focusing on the blood. What's it going to do? Man, it does so much. You know, it's like we as believers are called to do some things that don't look normal to the regular world, but they're things of power. We're focusing on Jesus. He is the key, amen? So of course, something's actually happening as you're sitting there focusing on him. Something's actually happening, amen? Okay, now we're gonna do step two. Remember what that is. Once you've taken care of the sin, then you can get to the wound. How many people just had a thought, just kind of popped to their mind about their wound? They got to receive their target. Raise your hand higher. Okay, now you have your target. And you can put the glory and the light on that particular target. Make sure it just came to you that you didn't think of it. Okay? And if you didn't get your target, it's okay. Half the time when I'm soaking my soul and I get a miracle, I don't even know what I'm soaking. I just know something's wrong. So I put the glory and the light on it, and then I feel the shift, and I get the miracle. Amen? Okay, so let's go to step two. Just be like the woman with the issue of blood. She just kept saying to herself and kept saying to herself, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed and made whole. And when she did, the son of righteousness, Jesus Christ, arose on her with healing in his wings, his glory, and his beams of light. And healing virtue was released on her, and it gave her the power to be excellent of soul. Amen? Just begin to think about the light, decree the light, believe in the light, focus on Jesus and his light. Amen? And every time you get distracted, bring your mind back to him and his glory and his light. That's your job. Okay, we're ready? Everyone take a deep breath. Let it out. Now focus.
I just saw some checks being written and passed out to people. People are getting checks right now. Right now, you're getting a financial healing and a breakthrough right now. Keep your focus, focus on the light, on the glory. Somebody who's backslidden is being brought back to God. Focus on the light.
Somebody's divorce is being turned around right now. people have seen visions or had an encounter already? Raise your hands higher. Let me see. Excellent. Excellent. Now we're going to do step three. We're just going to worship the Lord because it's all about Jesus. Amen? It's all about Jesus. Right now, diseases in your mouth are being extracted right now. Teeth are being healed right now. All kinds of different healings are happening on teeth right now. From infections being healed in the name of Jesus, to roots being reestablished, to new enamel growing, to teeth coming in right now in the name of Jesus right now. Right now, I speak to infections in the teeth, and I command you to die in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, every infection, every disease on the gums, periodontal disease, every sort of mouth affliction right now being healed in the glory realm. Right now, in Jesus' name, right now. Shut up. Legs are lengthening right now. Those legs that are too short, one leg is shorter than the other. They're lengthening right now in the name of Jesus. I command legs that to grow out right now. Legs that are not the same length as the other. Grow out for the hips to become even, for the relief to come in your back so that all back pain would leave. And I command the spirit of pain to leave. Bow the knee to Jesus right now. Bow the knee to Jesus right now. Spirit of pain right now. In the name of Jesus, bow the knee to Jesus right now. In Jesus' name. Yes, pain. Yes, pain. You leave right now. You leave necks. You leave backs. You leave legs. You leave feet. Pain right now. All the spirits of pain have to depart in the name of Jesus. Their king bowing to the presence of Jesus' name right now. We command all pain to be dissolved and to leave the body in the name of Jesus right now. Angels are here. Angels are here. Angels are here. Angels just walked in to help right now. Angels just walked in to help you right now. Ministering spirits right now. Bringing freedom. Rescue team is available to you right now. Gastrointestinal disease right now. Right now. It's being healed right now. Gastrointestinal disease being healed right now in the name of Jesus. No more of that disease right now. It's bowing the knee to the name of Jesus. It's leaving your body right now in Jesus' name. You're going to feel tingling right now. Tingling right now. You're going to be helped right now in Jesus' name. If you feel cold right now, you're being delivered by the power of Jesus because the scriptures say that God uses the, the snow and the hail for times of war and battle. If you're feeling the cold hitting your body, you're being delivered of your affliction right now. If you feel the power of God, the heat coming on you, that's the light, the glory light of Jesus is coming upon your body and is physically healing your body right now. Receive that power right now. Receive that healing right now in your body in the name of Jesus. Right now, ears are opening up in the realm right now. 
They're opening up right now. Pop, pop, pop. Right now, right ears, right now, being opened up. And the sinus is being cleared out in the name of Jesus right now. Right now, right now in Jesus' name. Left ear coming, opening up, opening up, opening up. Signs and wonders happening for you right now in your sinus cavities, in your ears, in the auditory devices right now. Things being rebuilt inside your ear canals right now. In the name of Jesus, sore throats are leaving. Raspiness is leaving right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. Up. Infection drying up right now in the name of Jesus. Mind control. I speak to mind control in the name of Jesus right now. The Lord is healing mind control right now. Spirits are leaving your mind. There's going to be clarity in your mind right now. The spirit of legion bowing the knee. No longer controlling your mind in the name of Jesus right now. Right now. Every curse being broken off of your mind. You're going to think clearly. Bi bipolar, depression, anxiety. All mental disorders bowing the knee to Jesus right now. Bowing the knee. You bow the knee. Bow the knee. Break the chains. Break the chains. Shabbat. Jesus. It's a kineata. Wrist right now. Somebody's wrist is being healed right now. The chains are being broken off of your wrist. Break, break. Right now, cancer, I speak to every cancer cell inside your body, and I command cancer to die in Jesus' name. I remove the king over the kingdom of the creepy, crawly things of the invisible realm of the biological kingdom, and I command every virus, every bacteria, every mutated cell to die in Jesus' name right now. Right now, those cancers are dying. Oh, I feel electricity is running up my leg. It's true. Right now, those cancers and those diseases, those, those afflictions in your body are dying off right now. I'm feeling the witness, the power of the spirit. I've got, I've got glory heat all over my back and my neck, but the chills and the electricity are running up my leg because the power of the Lord is being released to kill diseases. Right now, in Jesus' name, they're bowing the knee. And they're going to leave your body. And you're having freedom, freedom from disease in the name of Jesus. Break the chains, oh Lord. Break the chains. You break the Jesus. chains, oh God. Jesus. You break the chains. Give Jesus a praise. Hallelujah. I want to make you aware of something before we finish. Do you realize that you just took part in your own miracle? Did you hear me? You Use your faith and your focus to get healings in your emotions, in your finances, in your body. What does that mean? That you can go home and do it again and again and again. You don't have to rely on having to go to a meeting to get your healing. Though, hey, the atmosphere in the meeting is really awesome and it helps. But now you've got a tool that you can use to usher in signs, wonders, and miracles in your life. I soak my soul every day, and you know what? I can literally say that every day I get a miracle. Sometimes they're smaller little miracles. Sometimes they're huge, major, major miracles. Financial miracles, miracles in my physical body. By, and I get those miracles by doing just what we did tonight in my own house, in my own living room. I turn on the worship and I focus. I focus on the blood and I focus on the glory and the light. Keep it up. Don't stop. Don't stop. Amen? And you're going to see, you're going to get progressively more and more healed, more and more well. And then you're going to see miracles in your marriages, miracles in your, in, with your sons and daughters, miracles in your business, miracles in your ministry, miracles then for your neighbors. And then when you pray for people, stuff is really going to actually start happening. 
and you're going to see signs and wonders and you're going to be so excited about the kingdom of heaven. Amen. How many people are going to go home and continue to soak? Amen. Can we give a hand for the team, for everyone who did such a wonderful job tonight? I don't know. There they are. I want to thank you all for coming. Did you learn some amazing things this weekend? Hallelujah.